Hello, and welcome to the Body of Christ, a call to community, week two, where we will be discussing the question, why community? Um, this week, I want to remind you of the format that we uh, have in this class. Uh, there will be a 15-minute presentation, followed by a time where we break up into meeting rooms for discussion. Those questions can be found in the Bible class invitation email, and I will also have them on the screen towards the end of this presentation. I hope you will stick around uh, for those discussion times because I think it's the best part of our class, the most effective for us as we pursue community together. Um, but today we want to discuss the question, why community? Uh, last week we defined community as a group of people who study the Word of God together, who pray together, who worship together, fellowship together, serve and give sacrificially together, and share their faith together. Um, so why do we need to do all these things together? Technically, you can do all of these things individually except for fellowshipping. So why uh, do we need to do these in community? You know, in our culture, we're raised uh, to be independent, kind of to be self-made people, to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, um, to just thrive on our own. And uh, our society is becoming more individualistic and isolated every day, only accelerated by the current pandemic and uh, situations that we're in. But God has a different plan for us. Um, though it can be difficult to get along with other people, much less serve in community and thrive in community with them, um, that is what God is calling us to. Uh, let's look at the scripture uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27, and see uh, what Paul says to us there. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body. But if that's parts, should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So from this passage, we can see several important things. Number one, Though we are many, we are one. Uh, yes, we all have different personalities, different interests, uh, different abilities and talents. And imagine that we even have different opinions and viewpoints on life. Sometimes it's overwhelming, the diversity that we find in our culture and even within our church family. Um, but we must remember that we are one in Christ, regardless of of our social standing, our economic standing, our uh, racial uh, backgrounds, or our political stances, all of those things, yes, some of those are important, but what is most important is that we are one in Christ. And we can cross over any of those barriers uh, to, to stay united and bonded in Christ. And second of all, we all have different purposes. Not all of us are fit to work with children or to work with the youth or to cook meals uh, for our fellowships 
or to teach a Bible class or to preach or to lead worship. We all have different purposes. And so what is important for us is in our time of community is to find out what gifts God has given us, um, which sometimes we have a hard time seeing those in ourselves. And we often need people in our community to tell us, hey, you're really good at this. God has blessed you with a talent for that. And then we can pursue our purpose that God has laid out for us as a part of the body. And speaking of that, God designed each one of us just as he wanted. And so while some of us may be good getting up in front of a group and talking, uh, someone else may be really good at listening and just being there with someone to give them comfort by just offering a listening ear. And we can't all be all things at all times. Uh, we all have different gifts as we discussed. And so what we need to understand is that we're all going to be different and we're all going to be playing a different role in the body of Christ and within our community. And that's okay because that's the way God designed us. He made us different. And how awesome is it that we are so different? I love it. Um, an artist once sang a song and he talked about uh, the different skin tones of, of people in the world being a kaleidoscope of colors. It's the same thing in the body of Christ, right? He made us beautiful together. We are a kaleidoscope of talents and abilities. Um, not all of us are going to be the eye of the body or the ear, right? Some of us have to be the hands, the feet, and uh, even the intestines. It's the way it is, right? A body needs all those parts to function. And so we get to be the way God designed us. And fourth, we know that we can't do it alone, right? As we discussed last week, reading the scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 uh, through 12, it said, pity the one who falls down and has no one to help him up, right? But it says two uh, can keep warm together, uh, two can easily defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. God did not design us to be alone. All the way back in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, we talked about this last week. God said it's not good for man to be alone. And so he made Eve for Adam, and he made the church for us so that we can be together. And fifth, everyone is important, right? It's easy for us to think, oh, well, the elders or the preacher or the ministers, they're the most important people in the church. Maybe the deacons or a prominent worship leader or something like that. But the truth is, every single person is important. It's very important for us to not just focus on the public figures in the church, but also the people that are quietly serving in the background. Um, there are so many people uh, serving in different ways, and it's easy to think somebody's more important than the other, when the truth is we're all equally valued and important, not only in God's eyes, but we should be in each other's eyes as well. And sixth, God joined us together. Just like God created Adam from the dust, putting his body together, right? Just like it says, the psalmist says, you knitted me together in my mother's womb, right? Just as God put the physical bodies together, he put the church together. And he put us together just as he purposed and as he designed and as he wanted. And so we need to be together in community. And we must care for each other, right? We're, we're, we're uh, not so individualistic in, in, this, in this body of Christ. We have to care for one another, not just caring for ourselves, right? I want you to think, um, imagine you're working on a project and you are hammering in a nail, right, into a, a board, and you're hitting that hammer on that nail as, as best you can, but, you know, as times do happen, sometimes you miss the nail and you smash your thumb. What's your reaction? Well, you know, probably the first thing you're going to do is let go of the hammer and grab your thumb. Maybe you will stick it in your mouth, hopefully not now, because we don't want you to get any germs, but you may, and hopefully you won't say a bad word, but you might squeeze it and say, ah, oh, that hurts, and you, you go inside and run it under some cold water, put some ice on it, and then you treat it very gingerly for the next few hours or days until it, it recovers, right? You care for that thumb, the whole body Everything you're doing, uh, you forget about the project and you focus on your thumb, right? You want to take care of that wounded part, that hurting part. 
um, right? We don't look at the thumb and say, you idiot, why did you get in the way, right? And the thumb doesn't look at the other hand and say, hey, moron, why did you hit me with a hammer? And then they start fighting with each other. No, everything stops and we focus on the hurt part and we suffer with it, right? And that's how it should be in the body of Christ. But too often when someone is hurting, maybe they confess a sin, we just tend to gossip about it or we don't we isolate from them because we don't know what to say instead of just loving that person and journeying with them, right? And when the same as when when one part is honored, we're supposed to rejoice with it. We're not supposed to be jealous or envious, but when someone is successful and celebrating, we should honor them. Okay? Because that's what a body does. We are one. And then finally, we are so different right? As we discussed before, we come from all different backgrounds, from all over the world, from different cultures and languages and races, and we're in different places economically and socially and politically. But those things, we must put those aside and realize that we are one community. We don't all have to be the same. We don't all have to look alike and think alike and act alike, but we should all be one. Let's take a look at another passage, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, and then we'll pick it up again in verses 11 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. We are called to community. Paul gives us several attitudes and actions uh, that we should pursue in community as part of the body of Christ here in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, be humble, be gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, and make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Paul tells us these things as instructions, as encouragements, so that we can be unified into one community, into one body of Christ. Right? We have all received grace. Amen? We're so thankful for the grace that we have received through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection. Praise God for that grace we so desperately need. And is as a part of the body of Christ, we need to show grace to the other parts. We need to, to be spreading grace freely and abundantly within our community. We have been equipped. It says that Jesus Christ, he equipped us to serve in order to build up the body of Christ, in the unity of faith, in the, and so that we can have more knowledge, and so that we can become mature, complete followers of Christ. Um, so he has prepared us, just as he designed the body, he has prepared each part of the body. The physical body has a purpose, right? We know what those are. Feet are made for walking, right? Hands we use to pick up things. Our, our stomachs, they digest the food so that we can live. Our lungs breathe in the air so that we can have oxygen uh, delivered through the bloodstream to all the parts of our body. Every part has a purpose, and God has designed us. He has equipped us as part of the body of Christ to help 
unify the body in faith and, and grow in knowledge and become mature followers of Christ. And he tells us that we are supposed to speak the truth in love, right? We aren't supposed to shy away from the truth, but when we do speak it, we should do so in love, with gentleness. And the, it says that the body grows when we each do our work. It's not, it can't rely on just a few people doing all the work because they can't. They weren't designed to do that. Everyone needs to do their part. Everyone needs to do the work so that the body of Christ will grow. Community is essential to Christians. It's essential because we are the body of Christ. And a hand cannot live by itself. It has to remain in the body. Uh, in order to live and to function and to fulfill its purpose. Okay, now we've come to the best part of our class. We get to divide up into discussion groups. So in a minute, you're going to be split up into breakout rooms, and you're going to have to click join uh, in order to get into that room. And then you're going to have uh, three discussion questions and then end with a time of prayer. And so those discussion questions can be found in the email invitation that you received this Zoom link to get into this class. But also, they're on the screen now. I will read them to you. Number one, why is it important for us to stay connected? Question two, what do you think your purpose is in the body of Christ? And three, who can you invite into your community? And so I want you to end with a time of prayer for courage and opportunity to invite someone into community with you. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you next week for, for lesson number three. I hope you've enjoyed this class and it's been beneficial to you today, and I hope that the discussion time will be even better. We'll see you next time.